Hello everyone, welcome back to Ramadan for You TV. I'm Zeynep Afsa. And I'm Afaslan. Uh, I hope everybody's Ramadan is going well today. Time sure flies by, doesn't it? There's only eight days left in Ramadan. Let's begin with our first segment, Zikir of the Day. Welcome back. Today's Zikir is very special and actually combines the Zikir we did earlier in this month with something else. Are you ready to hear what it is? It combines one of the three inseparable dhikrs we do after praying. It's SubhanAllah. The dhikr we will learn today is SubhanAllah wa bihamdihi, SubhanAllah al -adim. This dhikr means glory be to Allah and praise Him. Allah the most great. Hamd means to thank and azim means the most great. We are teaching you all of these dhikrs. Let's dive in. This journey of life is a never ending adventure with each experience unfolding a new piece of knowledge. Think of it this way. Sometimes, the absence of something makes us understand the importance of what we have. That sounds like a riddle, but listen closely. What do we do for 30 days in Ramadan? We don't eat or drink, right? What happens when we break our fast with iftar? The water is colder and more refreshing than ever, the food is extra delicious, and the conversation is even more fun. We also start understanding people with no food and water better, and we work harder to help them. To recap, we can take things for granted, but it's important to notice the beautiful things in life we have and thank Allah for them. SubhanAllah was a smaller dhikr we learned, but it was a key piece to our puzzle. Now, it's SubhanAllah wa bihamdihi, SubhanAllah al -adim. Let's look at when we would use it. Take a drive to a beach. Imagine a giant sandbox, but instead of sand, it's made of super soft golden sugar. That's the beach when the sun hits it just right. Right next to the sugar sand, there's a giant sparkly pool of blue water. That's the ocean. That's where the sugar meets the water. It's the perfect place to build sand castles, and you can even bury your friends in the sand and pretend they're treasure hunters. The beach air smells different than anywhere else. It's a salty breeze that tickles your nose and makes your hair feel all wavy. Take notice of the beach critters too, the bright red crabs or the jellyfish that swim so quickly. All things that beautify the earth and you can see and thank Allah for. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. We want you to say this thicker 30 times. Look at the things you're in life in a different light. With each Ramadan night, blessings ascend, inner peace that has no end. See you tomorrow. Let's repeat, let's repeat this zikr again today. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. When we want to praise and glorify Allah, we recite this zikr. Let's repeat it 5,000 times together and open our hands and hearts for daily dua. Oh Allah, today we come before you to present the prayers of the innocent our hearts are filled with their pain and our tears flow down our cheeks. We pray for the innocent who are suffering from oppression, hunger, war, and all kinds of injustice in the world. We plead with you, have mercy on the innocent, protect them from all evil, and grant them, grant them the opportunity to live a peaceful life. Help those who are oppressed. Save, the, uh, save them from the hands of the oppressors and ensure that justice is served. Provides sustenance for those who are hungry and grant peace to whom are suffering from war. Bring justice to those who are wronged. O oh Lord, accept our prayers. Make us your servants who help um, the innocent. Protect them and embrace them. Amen. Protect innocent people from all evil and grant them opportunities to live a peaceful life.
What a heartfelt duo. Now we will be Fatma Nur's guest and explore her Ramadan corner. Um, every day on Tuesdays, I pick a book. Wow, thank you Fatma Nur for showing us your amazing room with the great decorations. I want to know what a chocolate cake you like because we're going to be making a cake today. Let's see what they're baking though. and today I'm going to show you how to make marble cake. So what you're going to need is three tablespoons of water, three tablespoons of cacao, one third cup of chocolate chips, three eggs, one cup of milk, one cup of oil, two and a half cups of flour, and one cup of sugar, and also a pack of baking powder. Now you Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then you have to roll up your sleeves and it's time to get cooking. So first you're going to put your eggs into your mixer and then you're going to put your sugar with it. So now you're going to put your lever up and put it on level 10 to five minutes. Okay, so now you, uh, after five minutes, you need to close it and put this thing on top of it. And then you need to put your milk and then your oil. 
put it on level four for three minutes. Now that my liquids are ready, I can get ready to put in my flour. So first you're gonna to wanna to put it into stir mode or like the lowest mode you have. And then you're gonna to want to slowly put in the flour. So you're gonna to wanna to mix this mixture for like about three minutes. And then you're gonna to wanna to put your baking, uh, your baking powder, your baking something. And now, once you put that in, you have to, uh, you have to mix it for one minute. Now that this mixture is done mixing, you can get your um, cooking spray and spray it into your pan. So now you need to take your batter out of the mixer and you're gonna wanna save a quarter or one fourth of it uh, so you can make the chocolate part of the marble cake. So now you're gonna wanna put it in. So you should leave about this much of the batter left. And now you need to add your cacao into your batter and this step is optional but i'm gonna do it so i'm gonna add these chocolate chips and now you need to add your three tablespoons of water now you need to mix it by hand so now it should look like this or without the chunks because I added chocolate chips. And now you're going to want to add this into your, uh, into your like pan. Now to level it out, you just want to like tap it. And now we're going to put it to the oven. Now I got my cake out of the oven and now we're just going to put this on top and now we're just going to flip the cake around and hopefully uh, we put enough uh, spray that it won't stick. So we're just going just gonna to flip that around and now let's see how our cake turned out. And yeah, this is our cake. If you want, you can sprinkle like like uh, powdered sugar on top of it, or you can make pudding and eat it with that. Both are pretty good, and yeah. So, that's our mobile cake. Finally, time to eat. Wait a minute, I'm fasting. Guess I have to wait until it's off. Come on. Thank you, Didri Bobart, for teaching us how to make marble cakes. If you guys also like marble cakes, feel free to write in the comments. Now let's jump into the music of the day.
Thank you, Nirvana Band, for that amazing performance. That was real talent. Now get your pen and papers ready, because we're going to be learning about Tefsir of the Day, Surah Nas. Say, I take refuge in the Lord of the people, the absolute ruler of the human race, the God of the people. The lordship of Allah is seen through how he creates, feeds, germinates, and protects us. The absolute ruler of the people is their owner, ruler, writer of their destiny, and the provider of their health and prosperity. The God of the people, their temple, and many more adjectives can be directed towards him only. It is very interesting that the first three ayahs are ordered in the way that they are. When a person first observes the natural processes occurring within him and his physical development, he realizes that he has a creator. This allows the believer to realize that we only worship him because worship could only be towards the one who needs nothing. This is why we are asked to seek refuge in him from all evils. From the evil of the lurking whisperer. In the surah, shaitan is not mentioned by name, but is mentioned through its two adjectives. Those are Wiswas and Hannas. Wiswas is the one who whispers a lot and has the characteristics of a whisperer. Whispering is considered to insinuate bad thoughts into the people's hearts with a secret voice such as a whisper and to provoke them into acting upon them. Hannas is the one who has the characteristics of a sly fox, one who follows a person insidiously in order to lead them to evil acts or thoughts. When a person remembers Allah, shaitan withdraws. When a person is heedless of Allah, shaitan immediately whispers to him, who whispers into the hearts of humankind from among jinn and humankind. There are two groups of shaitan, those that whisper and those who try to get people to deviate from the way of Allah. One of these groups is the jinn and the other is humans. As a matter of fact, Surah Al-Annam states, and so we have made for every prophet enemies, devilish humans and jinn, whispering to one another with elegant words of deception, which informs us that human and jinn shaitan try to deceive people with deluding words. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, to take refuge in Allah from the jinn and human, and then told him that there were shaitans from humans as well as from jinn. We can recite Surah Al Nas to seek refuge with Allah. Now we have Sahaba animation and make sure to take some notes because we can ask in the Kahoot. The radiant Sahaba to Fail bin Am. Fail bin Am was a well known leader of the Yemeni Al tribe. He had two sons, Amr and Haris, who later on became Muslim as well. Before he became Muslim, he was known for his generosity and his knowledge of poetry. He was a tradesman whose pot was always on the stove and his door was always open to visitors. He'd feed the hungry and protect his people. He was a good poet and had an intelligent personality. Before the Hijra, when the Muslims were under the boycott of the polytheists, Tufay traveled from Yemen to Mecca to embrace Islam. When he arrived at the city, the notables of Quraysh introduced the Prophet as a rebel and asked Tufay not to listen to the Prophet's words. After this warning, he was so cautious that he even put cotton in his ears to avoid hearing him. Despite his precautions, Tufay saw the Prophet while praying in front of the Kaaba and heard what he was reciting. He was affected by the verses of the Quran, and Tufay being a poet, he was able to distinguish between the words of a human and the words of God. Upon telling himself that, if what he says is nice, I will accept, and if not, I will leave. 
So he decided to talk to the prophet. After meeting the prophet, Tufayl read some of his poems, and the prophet read to him Surah Al Ihlas and Mu'awizatain, and invited Tufayl to Islam. Tufayl told the prophet that he had never heard such beautiful words, and as a result, he decided to become Muslim. After staying in Mecca for a short while, he returned to his hometown. With his invitation, his mom, dad, son, and according to some sources, Abu Huraira accepted Islam. He immediately gathered his tribe and told them about Islam. Tufayl was excited, and he was waiting for the people to accept Islam immediately. However, his tribesmen did not show interest in Tufayl's invitation. He returned to Mecca desperate and sad, and complained to the Prophet, O oh, Messenger of Allah, they did not accept my invitation. Curse them, he said. There was no curse for those who could not come to the right path in the language of the Messenger of Allah. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O oh Lord, show the true path to the Dal's tribe, he prayed. He turned to Tufayl and said, Now return to your tribe and invite them to Islam. Don't be harsh on them. Explain Islam to them kindly. In addition, to make Tufayl's job easier, the Prophet prayed, O oh Allah, give him light and blessing. Upon the Prophet's prayer, it is said that Tufay's forehead started having light. When Tufay did not want the light on his forehead but on his whip, they said the light passed to his whip. Thus, it is believed that his nickname, Zinur, or the Radiant One, is related to this light. Tufay bin Um, following the orders of the Prophet, invited the Dawah's people to Islam for many years. During that time, our Prophet migrated to Medina and the battles of Bidr, Uhud, and Trench were fought and the number of Muslims increased. Over the years, Tufayl missed our Prophet dearly and wanted to see him. He couldn't take it any longer and came to Medina with those who accepted Islam from his tribe. Tufayl participated in the Battle of Khaybar with his tribe at the time. Later, until the death of our Prophet, peace be upon him, Tufayl did not leave him. Hadith al showed great heroism in the wars against those who turned away from religion during the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr After the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet commissioned Tufay to destroy Zulkifayn, the idol of Amr ibn Humirna made by the Das tribe, and to ensure that his tribe joined the Battle of Taif. He set the wooden idol on fire, and while it was still burning, Tufay recited this prayer. O Zudkefin, I have never worshipped you. I came to this world long before you. Look how I set your heart on fire. After this incident, the Dawes tribe members became Muslims. Tufay joined the Muslim army in the Battle of Taif with the 400 members he had enlisted. They used the catapults and the babit, a fighting tool used for carving the fortress walls they brought with them in this battle. Tufay saw a dream going to the Yamama War, where he would become a martyr with his son, Amr. However, in later sources, he and his son were martyred in the Battle of Yarmouk in 636 CE. What a great story about one of our Sahabas. Isn't it interesting how their backgrounds are so different before they joined Islam? Now we're going to Ramadan interviews. Happy Ramadan everybody and welcome to Ramadan interviews. Today we are in front of Wayne Public Library going to interview people about Ramadan. Let's go. Hello, how are you? Doing fine, thank you. Okay, so the first question is, um, in Ramadan there are exceptions for fasting for the sick and for pregnant. What do you think about those? I think it's a right decision because pregnant women and, or sick people should be treated different. Yes, definitely. Um, I think it's it should be a choice. If um, someone wants to fast, then they should be allowed to. If they're you know they have a condition, um, 
but if they feel that they're okay and they can make it through, um, then, you know, it's up to them. It's <laughs> I guess just from a quick perspective without thinking or reading too much yeah. into it, I would say, uh, um, I think it's, I, I would say a good idea nutritionally yeah. uh, for a, maybe a pregnant female, mm -hmm. uh, for her young, for development. Mm -hmm. uh, Non-expert opinion, but... <laughs> And the second question is, can you guess how many hours Muslims fast in Ramadan? Twelve. I'm not close. <laughs> in, in this area, it's generally 14. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how many hours, but uh, whatever they are able to do it, it shouldn't be forced for any specific hour, but whatever the person can. Uh, from what I think, it's um, daylight hours. Yeah. So I would hours. guess... Uh, Somewhere between uh, 10 to 14, 10 to 14 hours. Yes, that's true. We fast about 14 hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. The third question is: um, Ramadan is a time for giving back to people in need and um, also helping those out in need. Can you think of any ways people can give back in this month? Well, I think there's probably a lot of options. Um, you know, maybe collecting food yeah. uh, for. Uh, you know, people that have f food uh, security issues. Mm -hmm. um, maybe something simple like helping someone in your neighborhood, like if someone's elderly with their ho yeah. house uh, needs, maybe like their grass or their snow or, or something like that. Thank you very much. In this month? Sure. Helping the sick, uh, taking care of the sick, or giving shelter to the um, people that need it, or food for the people that are hungry. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome offer to volunteer in some mm -hmm. capacity um, there's a lot of uh, people who are uh, homeless or are um, I don't know, like soup kitchens where they can yes. serve them food or pack bags of food for people to yeah. take all those <laughs> thank you very much that's it for today's episode see you in the next episode bye What a nice interview. It's so great seeing them doing it in random spots with random people all the time. I hope you're all packed with information because it's time. Good luck, everyone. everyone welcome to the Kahoot I'm your host Zeynep our code is 430538 <laughs> Our code is four three zero five three eight. We will wait a few minutes, then we will start. You can get your notes ready. While waiting, you can subscribe our channel and like our video.
our code is All right, guys, we will start 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's start. Our first question is coming. Three, two, and one. What was today's secure of the day? La habla bala kuwata illa billah. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kintu min al-zalimin. Astaghfirullah al-azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al-azim. The correct answer is Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-azim. Let's check out our scoreboard. Darya is in the first place, 14th lower is the second, Kahkins is like third, Imit in the fourth, Zainab is in the fifth. Let's continue with the second question. What does Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-azim mean? I seek the forgiveness of Allah the Almighty. Glory be to Allah and praise Him, Allah to the Most Great. There is no deity except You. Exalted are You. Indeed, I have done wrong. There is no power and no strength except with Allah. Correct answer is Glory be to Allah and praise Him, Allah to the Most Great. Our scoreboard is changed. 14 lower is in the first place, Bahar in the second, Ihsan in the third, Meli is in the fourth, and Fatosh in the fifth. Question number three. What was today's Ramadan cuisine? Waffles, marble cake, brownies, cupcakes. Yes, it was a delicious marble cake. Let's check out our scoreboard. Fortnite Lover is in the first place, Ihsan in the second, Fatash in the third, Leila Gulen is in the fourth, and Naji in the fifth. Question number four. Which instrument was not played in music of the day? Small ball, piano, guitar, sauce. Correct answer is piano. Let's check out the scoreboard. Naji is in the first place, Fatash in the second, Ihsan in the third, Kubra in the fourth, and Aisha in the fifth. Question number five. How did Tufayn bin Arm invite the Dove's people to Islam? By using harsh words? By beating them up? By using kind words? By forcing them to be Muslim? Correct answer is by using kind words. 
Fatosh is in the first place, Ihsan in the second, Naji in the third, Selma in the fourth, and Kibra in the fifth. Let's continue. Question number six. In which battle did Tufayn bin Arm and his son Am were murdered? Battle of Taif, Battle of Uhud, Battle of Khaybar, Battle of Yarmouk. The correct answer is Battle of Yarmouk. Let's check out the scoreboard. Fatosh in the first place, Zainab in the second, Sarhat in the third, Ihsan in the fourth, and Suleiman in the fifth. Question number seven. How many hours do Muslims generally fast during Ramadan as discussed in the interviews? 12, 19, 10, 14. Our correct answer is 14. Fatosh is in the first place, Ihsan in the second, Suleiman in the third, Sarhat in the fourth, and Zainab in the fifth. Question number eight, true or false? The two types of devils are human and jinn. Is it true or false? The correct answer is true. Fatosh is in the first place, Suleiman in the second, Vehbi Chokavja in the third, Sarhat in the fourth, and Naji in the fifth. Question number nine. What gift did Fatmanu receive every other day during Ramadan corners? Qurans, books, prayer mats, tasbihs. She received books for every other day. Let's check out the scoreboard. Fatosh is in the first place, Suleiman in the second, Sarhat in the third, Vehbi Chokavji in the fourth, and Naji in the fifth place. Question number 10. What tribe was Tufail Bir Amr the leader of? Iraqi Misr tribe, Sudanese Arabia tribe, Egyptian tribe, Yemeni Ars tribe. And correct answer is Yemeni Ars tribe. Suleiman is in the first place, Sarhat in the second, Fatosh in the third, Wehbi Chokavji in the fourth, and Mustafa in the fifth place. Last question, guys. Are you excited? Which toy was beside our awesome house? Ping pong rockets, mouse, little farmer, Spider Man. And correct answer is ping pong rockets. Let's check out final scoreboard. In the third place, we have Vehbi Chokavja. Second place, Sarhat. And the first place, we have Suleyma. Congrats, guys. Don't forget to send your screenshot if you're in top 10. And con let's continue our program.
Congrats to winners of today. See you all tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, everybody. Hope you. I hope everybody has a great iftar. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you again at 6 p.m.